Thank you all for being here. It's me, Ari Dotsit. I just call him Rashid. It's fine. I'm about to do a dual live. So I'm going to use the screen share. That's why I have the screen share account on now. I'm going to share my, my other screen over here. Then later, I'm going to turn towards the whiteboard. I'll go on StreamYard on my mobile phone here, my Xiaomi smartphone, and I'll begin to continue the live stream for, further showing the, live, uh, the whiteboard. It's not, seeing the whiteboard from here is a bit difficult and the quality is a bit low. So I'll switch to my mobile phone soon. And so that's just so you can know that's what, what's going to happen during, during this live stream. But now, question to you. Can you hear me clearly? Well, by the way, for the Netherlands, clock is ticking. Remember that clock is ticking. That was for whoever it concerns in the Netherlands. But anyway, can you all hear me clearly? Let me know that, please. If you can hear me clearly, I'm going to switch towards the, the Word document where I copy and paste some scriptures that I want to, uh, want to address to you. Yes, we're going to scriptures today. Okay? Because the Old and New Testament are guidelines that tell us we need to serve Christ. And Christ is one we, we serve, not the Bible. Okay? The law, statute, commandments, and forth are guidelines to preserve us in abundance. So let's go to the guidelines, to, to the handbook right now. Okay, let me show the screen share. By the way, can you all see the screen here? Um, see the Word document? Can you all see it? Well, let me remove this. Can you all see this right over there? Just let me know. So I know if I need to do something about the visual settings or not, can you all see this other screen? Hold on, let me see if on the YouTube it's, it's much better. Hold on. I don't get any live chats right now, so let me just Yes. Okay, you can see. Miss Emma, glad you're here. You're right on time. Good. So we are now going to read the scriptures. John chapter 13, verse 7. You can you don't have to pick up your Bibles because I copy paste them right over here. Jesus, that's when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Jesus said to Peter, What I do. What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know there hereafter. Old English, old-fashioned English. No, it's not old English, old-fashioned English. What does it really mean? Jesus told Jesus was about to wash the feet of the apostle Peter, or disciple Peter. They became apostles afterwards. Peter was thinking, Lord, what are you doing? Washing my feet. There's something, there's something slaves do. Peter was thinking, Lord, what are you doing? And Jesus told them, What I'm doing now, you don't understand. We don't understand later. So understand this, anytime the Heavenly Father does something, he, you will always understand it eventually. What they say in church, oh, God works in mysterious ways and nobody has any understanding whatsoever, that is unbiblical. That's even against reality, it's nonsense. When God does something, it doesn't mean you also understand it right now, but eventually will understand it. And there are other believers walking the earth with more experience than you can explain things to you. Like I'm explaining to you right now. Well, I'm not that aged. Uh, I, only have, I only have 31 years, and I'm about to turn 32 this year in 7th August. But anyway, let's continue. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 15 to 18. I'm not taking the whole chapter of Isaiah 60. The whole chapter of Isaiah 60 is important for us. But I'm focus on verse 15 to 18. Let's go. This, these are promises from the Heavenly Father. Now understand this. God can promise things because he has the ability to make things happen without being hindered at all. Human beings also have ability to do things, but we can be hindered by other human beings, or we can be hindered by circumstances. God cannot. However, because we're human beings with the ability to act, God wants us to participate in what he's promising us. So it comes down to this. When God gives you a promise, 
a universal promise. I'm not talking about individual prophecies God may give to you as an individual. I'm talking about the universal promises that are that are that are manifested in the Old and New Testament. The universal promises that we father always come with a condition our parts to comply. We are conditional creatures, okay? You need enough uh, sunlight, vitamin D, you need enough water so you don't get dehydrated, you need enough food for your body to function. You, We are conditional creatures. There are certain conditions that need to be met for us to be healthy, sane, and stable. And as human beings, everything we make will be conditional. For example, this is my Android smartphone over here. This phone needs electricity. So it needs to be charged. If there is no electricity around and I don't charge it, it's just that uh, electronic device. But I can't use it, I can't call, I can't make pictures, do nothing with it. So without electricity, this thing is useless. The condition this to work is to be charged with electricity, simple as that. This is something man-made. The phone is man-made. We are conditional creatures. We need conditions in order to function well. So everything we make, or bring forth will also have conditions to it. We are not capable of making something that will last by itself forever. We can't do that, okay? Now, as human beings, we are conditional creatures. And the number one condition of us is to be guided by the Heavenly Father, to let him be the leader that leads us and guides us, all right? So as our guide and our leader, the Heavenly Father has given us guidelines which are the manual instructions for how we should operate and function so that everything goes well with us in the long run, okay? So every promise, any universal promise given to us, mankind, will only apply in reality when we do our part. And here's another thing, when we do our part, there may still be retaliation from those who don't do their part. But even then we have, a bit, uh, we have ways to deal with that. So is it clear unto you now that every universal promise will have me father comes with the condition on our behalf that we have to comply with the promise. A prophecy is some is a report that will happen anyway. A prophecy is a divine report of what, what will happen in the future, certainly. But a universal promise does automatically mean it will happen. Okay? A prophecy will happen because the guarantee is a report. But the universal promise of Heavenly Father are bound to you obeying his covenant with us. Is this clear onto you? Let me know in the live chat. Is it clear onto you? Okay, Dion, is it clear to Dion? Is it clear to the rest also? Let me know. Okay. So, we are going to read a prom some promises that God has given to mankind because God wants the whole human species to, to, to serve him and operate in, in, in abundance. But only believe, believe, only redeems mankind, those only believers can practice this. So in practice, it comes for believers, but the initial in, uh, uh, motive is for all of mankind. So let's read over here, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 15 to 18. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you. I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breast of kings. This is symbolic because we know males don't have breasts that can give breast milk. This is symbolic. Okay. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of sto stones, iron. I will also make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither a wasting nor destruction within your borders. But you shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Wow, wow, wow. All of this over here comes down to this over here violence shall no longer be heard in your land. How many want that? There is no violence harming anyone around them. How many want that for themselves? 
but it's not just physical uh, it's not just violence physical violence it talks about neither wasting nor structuring your borders what is wasting wasting is when people remain dysfunctional and therefore they waste their lives okay so when people waste their lives go to dysfunction the community as whole misses out that is wasting destruction is when there's actual harm haunting a community though the dysfunction okay so look at this world links are neglectful towards one another you hear me that's why it's that's why first says whereas you you have been forsaken and hated so no one went through you i will make you an internal excellence a joy for many generations so the heavenly father wants to turn around the neglect and what you that you've been through and turn it around and transform the effects into something glorious he wants to do that and you will be benefiting from the riches on the earth okay and all those who don't serve that my father have no choice but to comply with you okay if all of mankind will be served them father, this will be different. But because God knows it's going to be a portion of mankind not collaborating, God said that those that collaborate, those that work with me, those that refuse to work with me, they'll end up having to uh, minister unto you. Okay? It doesn't mean that you, you that uh, you have to do your part, you do your part, but they have no choice but to comply with you in the long run. Okay? So, but here's what comes down to violence. Violence will not, will not be there. No, no waste, no wasted lives, and no, uh, how to say, poverty or sickness, and sees no destruction. Now, this is a promise from the Heavenly Father. Okay. Now, let's list further. Now we go to Isaiah chapter fifty-four, verse fifteen to seventeen. This is a famous one. A lot of churches use, but, but they often leave the context uh, uh, afterwards. Jesus said. That, okay, let's go first what Jesus said. Um, um, okay, because we know not all of mankind will collaborate. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 25. Jesus, Jesus here was sending out the 70 disciples. Jesus had 70 disciples, only 12 remained. And he was giving them power to uh, do miracles, all of that. But this is what this instruction Jesus gave to them. And this also comes for us. Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Hmm. This is a manual instruction from the Heavenly Father right over here. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What is wise as a serpent? Serpents tend to be flexible and alert in the environment. So we have to be flexible and alert. Then we should have a flexible and alert attitude in life. Because there are bad people around. we wing for bad, uh, bad fruit. Harmless as doves. So, so act in a way that you don't, people can't come with excuses to, to, to attack you or, or to make life hard for you, okay? So this alone contains two commandments. Because every instruction for having father for your benefit is a commandment, simple as that. So, but how many believers are obeying this? Being wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. Hmm. Let's go further, verse 17. But beware of men. Hold on a minute. Did Jesus say beware of evil spirits? Beware of the devil? Beware of fallen angels. Beware of the kingdom of darkness, as say some churches. Did Jesus say beware of evil spirits? Uh, please participate in the live chat. Did Jesus say beware, but beware of evil spirits? He said it. Let me, write, let, me write, let me respond to the live chat, please. Did Jesus say, but beware of evil spirits? But beware of Satan. Or be beware of the kingdom of darkness. Or beware of the paranormal. Did Jesus say that? Well, no, Jesus did not say that. He said, beware of men. Why? Because evil spirits are parasites to feed off of the human species. So it's human species in their neglectful state that empower evil spirits. So if evil spirits are dangerous, are dangerous out there, 
the way you deal with evil spirits is by dealing with the root of what keeps evil spirits powerful, and that's uh, the neglect of our own species. So it's our own species eventually that's behind every demonic uh, activity on the earth. Yes, demons are responsible for what they do. They are to blame. Of course, Satan is to blame. But we can't put it all on the devil. Who empowers the devil? He said, but beware of men. Beware of members of our own species. Men here can refer to men and women, okay? So it's not just human males. Beware of some, because some people of our own species, males and females, are not trustworthy nor reliable. Let's go further. Why just beware of them? Verse 17. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scorch you in the synagogues. Well, if you live, we, a lot of you don't live in a Judean community with synagogues. So with you, it may be the local church or whatever it is. So what Jesus said is that they're going to you man-made organizations to make life hard on you. Some of them will be religious, some of them will be secular, what we call secular at least. Anyway, because some, some of the members of our species will make life hard on you. And make things difficult onto you by going to established organizations. Verse 18, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Now, what's Jesus saying over here? Did Jesus say it's your fault that they have this attitude towards you? No. Jesus never blamed you for what they intend to do towards you. They do it towards you because they are wasteful, negative-minded creatures. And that's what the wasteful negative-minded creatures do. They, they, they waste themselves and other people okay and jesus will allow these things to happen towards you because by allowing this to play out they expose themselves this is what he said you shall be brought for governors and kings for my sake for whose sake him he's gonna let it happen for a testimony against them and the gentiles Ooh. okay verse 19 but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what you shall speak what shall be given you in that same hour which you shall speak for it is not ye that speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Wow. So God is telling you, these bad things are going to happen to you all, but don't be afraid because I let all play out as proof against them. They're actually bring the living proof against themselves. But you follow, remain in peace, follow my lead because I will give instruction on what to say and do when the time comes. Okay. Okay, there's, there's nothing wrong with get, getting advice from other people, okay? But God himself should be the main counselor uh, in their life with us, okay? Verse 21, and the brother shall live up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against the parents, and God shall be put to death. Wow. You know what they say in the world? Family first. Well, there are times family are the wolves that will devour you, literally devour you. Verse 22, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endured until the end shall be saved. Hated of all men. Now this is a prophecy relating to Judeans primarily, okay, in the end times. But even if you're not from Judean, Judean ethnicity, it still counts for you as a believer in the second, uh, eventually, okay? So if you know this prophecy was specifically for the Judeans, Believers, it comes for all beliefs in general. Okay. And remember in Isaiah chapter 6, it said you were hated and forsaken. Okay. So as a believer, you will be hated and forsaken at some point. But don't be afraid of it. Okay. Verse 22, and you shall be hated for, for he that you till the end shall be saved. Being saved, what's being saved here means? It doesn't mean salvation. Because you are saved the moment you become born again. The salvation, the being saved here refers to your daily life. Endure till the end. Which end? The end of your life? Endure until the end is symbolic for you are fully dedicated to following them for this guidelines. Because God wants you to benefit in the here and now. So why would God ask you to suffer all the harm till the day you die and that's going to be better? No, God wants you to have it good right now. So endure until the end. The end of who? The the end refers to what Jesus has done for you. So the self, the being saved here, the shall be saved, has nothing to do with salvation. Let's do with redemption. Your life being redeemed here and now. But here's another instruction. 
For when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily, verily so means truthfully, I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of man become. The second part here only come for the seven disciples back then. So they can't apply it to us. Okay? But the first thing, but when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. Verse 24, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Remember, the scribes and Pharisees were saying, oh, this man Jesus over here, he is in service of the fallen angel Beelzebub. That's how he's doing all this good stuff. Because Beelzebub is a fallen angel that revolts against Satan after all kicked out of heaven. Beelzebub claims he's a good guy, fallen angel, a good demon. And so Beelzebub has a following of good demons, so-called doing good ideas. So they actually accuse Jesus of being in service of Beelzebub. And Jesus told the disciples here, if they call me Beelzebub, how are they going to treat you guys? Okay? So here you can clearly see Christ gave us guidelines to follow. Okay. Now Christ is not saying that you have to be on the run all the time. When they persecute you in this city, flee into another. Christ does. Christ doesn't want you to just flee all the time. But what Christ is saying is, is that look, if somewhere people are so unworthy of your presence, take your presence away from those people, please. Why keep yourself in danger because they want to prove something at your expense? They are destroying themselves. Just, to, just because they want you to lose. You see how, you see, see how dangerous and um, delusional people are? When you persevere, the Lord, oh, you read, uh, the Lord automatically makes a way for you. Absolutely. The English, the English say, but in due to the end, and you shall be saved. It's symbolic. Because why would God give you instructions of what to do about the danger if you're meant to injure all the danger until you die? Uh, you, you see what I mean? So let's go. So this, these are some instructions God's given us. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Okay. Let's go to John chapter 13, verse 12 to 17. Verse 12. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and he was set down again, he said unto them, Know you what I've done to you? You call me master and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash each other's feet, another's feet. For I have given you an example that you shall do as I have done unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant not greater than his Lord, neither is, he, neither is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So Jesus repeated what he said earlier. A servant is not greater than his master. What Jesus meant is, listen, during this lifetime, listen, back then, it happened that people wore sandals back then often in Judea. Some people wore shoes, but the other wore sandals. Sometimes when you walk through uh, the landscape, your feet will get irritated and hurt. You will get scratched on your feet, don't get the sand and all of that because you live near a desert. So it's important to sometimes to sit down and wash your feet and calm your feet down. Back then, you would have slaves or prisoners that to wash the feet of other people to make it easy on them. And that type of job was seen as low, as humiliating. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You believers, brothers and sisters in, in me, you need to learn to look after one another. You, All of you will face pollution in this lifetime. All of you will face hinder, all type of stuff, but make sure you look after one another. Because remember, Look, look how they treat me. You think I'm treat you guys better? So as you said, if you know these things and you practice them, happy are you? Okay. And now we're going to Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six was documented, written down by the apostle Paul. And the apostle Paul made many errors in his, in his, in his lifetime and ministry. And he paid a lot daily for them. So Ephesians chapter six is of the, decades of unnecessary misfortune that Paul came to these conclusions, okay? So Christ is above the Apostle Paul. What, Christ, what the Apostle wrote here is so that we can 
operate in harmony with Christ, okay? And he gave instructions to a lot of churches take Ephesians chapter 6 out of context. I'm going to read the whole chapter to you right now. Hold on. Hold on. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Okay. It's children who obey their parents, not adults. Okay. Obey children cannot think for themselves. They cannot don't have a capacity, so they need adults around to guide them. Okay. And the main adults in your life as a child are your parents. But are all parents safe? Just one quick question to you. Are all parents safe? Let me know. Are all parents safe? Let me know. Okay, not all parents are safe. So, if God is giving us guidelines on how to be to be how to be abundant on the earth, that includes that God wants us to be safe first. So if not all parents are safe, that means children should not obey. Not all children should obey their parents then. Why? If the parents are neglectful or harmful, the child must be protected by the community. The community should intervene and put the child in a foster care or in, uh, some, in a, uh, give them step parents, whatever. The community should keep the adults in check, including the adults who have children. That is the obligation to the community. So children have no unconditional obligation towards their parents. They don't. And no adult who has a child is entitled to unconditional honor or obedience from, the, from the, uh, their offspring. They do not. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. So if, you, if the parents violate the Heavenly Father, then the child must look for help in the community to be delivered from those people. And you know what? A lot of, because listen, if you keep yourself in a bad situation, the situation will harm you. Now, a child doesn't have the option often to just leave. They don't. Children don't have many options. You know what I mean? So you can't blame a child for being in a bad environment. Okay? But here, if, even here, when the child understands Oh, my mom and dad aren't safe. They should cry out for help. You hear me? And the community must deal hard with those people. <laughs> if the community does not, the community is also violating the child. It's organized child abuse at this point. And how, how many adults out there have mental issues and they're wasting away in life because they have childhood trauma that haven't been processed. And they don't even know where childhood trauma is to follow them and wasting them away. And then they go to church, and church tells them, "Are your mother and father? Are your mother and father? Uh-uh, there's a condition over here. In the Lord. Verse 2, honor thy mother and father, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayst live long on the earth. Now, back then in the Old Testament, it was meant for the Israelites. The Ten Commandments were a mirror given to the Israelites for them to see you guys need help. It was never meant for them to hold on to the Ten Commandments. The Commandments were just there to show them you guys are not in a good condition. Need the rest of mankind. Okay? To them it was that you may have a long life in the land the Lord that God will give you. Well, the land the Lord has given us believers is the whole earth. You know what I mean? So for you to grow up into a safe and stable adult, you need a safe environment to be around. So if your parents are safe and environment is safe, obey them. Get along. Do your part as a child. But you're not a child forever. You could, you turn an adult very soon. But as an adult, if you notice that you've been harmed, maybe maybe not on maybe it was by accident. Maybe people didn't mean to. Maybe people were just incompetent or, or dysfunctional. But if you've noticed you you suffered some harm because how you were raised, admit it. Look for help. Simple as that. You forgive the people around you, but if they don't comply with justice, you don't grant them any amnesty. 
We believers need to stop this unconditional uh, loyalty towards parents. Not every parent is even worthy to be a parent. Straight up. Some people want children just to have someone to explode on later in life. They do. If your parents are like this, forgive them. Submit to them, Father, continue, and let us rapid base perish. Simple as that. It's not your fault they chose to be that way. Verse 4. And you fathers provoke not your children to rot, but bring them up in the nurture and animation of the Lord. Five servants, we have been them that are your mothers come to the flesh with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling wasn't a break expression. It doesn't literally to be afraid and to watch out. No. In sickness of your heart, as unto Christ. Verse six, not with eye service as men pleases, but as servants of Christ doing the will of, of God from the heart. With good will doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that whatever is good, Thing, any man do it, the same shall he receive from of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. So what is said here is that look, in daily life, some some people will be employed. Or you let you will have to deal with others having leverage over you. That's just how things work in daily life. But in the world, the leverage arts have over you tend to be misused and abused. So he was saying here, look, if you have people that have a leverage over you and you're, you're interdependent on them, collaborate with them in a peaceful way, knowing that you are serving God and that they're not above God. And let's go to verse 9. And you masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of birds with them. So what it's saying is, listen, if you have a master role of other people, where you are the employer uh, that pays them out of the month, they're working for you, or whether uh, you are a supervisor somewhere, or whether you are a judge, a police officer, or whatever. We have a master role of other people. You have the leverage of other people. Uh, don't threaten. Avoid using threats on people. Or maybe you are a landlord. They're, they are tenants. Landlord. I can't stand that the term landlord. Only Jesus Lord. For bear, bearing threatening. Why? Because remember, you have you, you have the master himself in heaven. So it's clear here, no threats, no violence. You can use force when necessary in specific situations, but no violence. You know what I mean? First said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay. Now, didn't you say beware of men? So what comes down to is that Satan is using the neglect of others to, to bring you down and to hinder you. But we're not, well, let's read further. First of all, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Good. We rest not against flesh and blood. A lot of people think, oh, our problems are not other human beings. That's not what it said. It said is, we're not going to wrestle against other human beings. Because that's a trap. Instead, we're going to deal with the paranormal that's behind them. Because fallen mankind energizes evil spirits. And because of that, evil spirits now have a hold on them. We would deal with the evil spirits that have a hold on them. Because the evil spirits are parasites that cleave onto them, okay? And by dealing with, this, with the paranormal behind them, we're able to deal with human beings also. Because face of human beings directly can escalate, okay? So the whole I think that you hear in church, oh, the guy did you dirty, it must be a spirit, it's not a human being, it's a spirit. Oh, everything is a demon. Okay, listen, there are times demons take over people and work through them, that's true. But... It's not all the time. Sometimes the human beings themselves are nasty, negative-minded creatures that, that, that escalate. Okay? In that case, evil spirits may use their negativity, but it's still them being negative to begin with. Now, this is not always because sometimes you have victims who are mentally broken down being used by demons. In that case, it's just a demon. Because you have to rescue the human being. But it's not always like that. Okay? You have believers. 
everything that goes wrong in their lives to go to the demons, 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 finding demons, demons, demons. First of all, we're never called to fight demons. We're meant to cast out evil spirits and to shut them down. That's what we're meant to do. We're not meant to fight them. You hear me? A lot of believers are fighting evil spirits, and by doing that, they're energizing the evil spirits because they were taught that anything that goes wrong in life is because of a demon. Well, sorry, but sometimes things go wrong in life because of other people that are neglectful. Okay? If you examine yourself and you came to the conclusion it's not you, then it means it's this other people, simple as that. And those other people are the ones energizing demons. So stop, folks, it's a demon, demon, demon. Even if demons are there, who are the human beings that send the demon or who mandate the demon or energize the demon? All right? Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. He repeats it, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So just, just he said, though he who endures till the end shall be saved. Here's, here, here Paul saying the same thing but in a different way. Put on the whole armor of God to withstand in the evil day. 14, stand therefore having your lowest girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith when ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So the most important part is the shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is symbolic. The Apostle Paul used the Roman military armor to, this, to, to symbolize things that we need to do. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Saints, not believers. Saints are the ones judging the roads. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Okay, now all of this is not to really apply to us directly. Okay. Before I continue and go to the second part of this live stream, it means to the whiteboard. Is it clear to you now that the Bible now nowhere said that human beings are not the problems, all evil spirits? Is this clear unto you? Let me know in the live chat. Very quickly to what Nantin Johnson said, I'm not going into too much. When a community tolerates child abuse, when a community um, blames adults for how dysfunctional they turned out, because if you were neglected or harmed as a child, you will turn out in a dysfunctional adult. If community blames grown folks for things they can't be blamed for, that means they're enabling and justifying child abuse. When that happens, God will. God will bring one of those victims that turn to monsters, God will bring them back to haunt the community. That's why you have serial killers, uh, or those weird politicians doing great things. God will bring back their harm onto them. Some of those children that were abused by the community, God will, God will even tolerate some of them to turn to monsters to come back to haunt the community. And God will not protect them from, from whatever the monster will do. Yep. Absolutely. Now, I think I missed one part over here. Okay. Now we're going to Isaiah. Before I continue off, oh, to the whiteboard, let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 15 to 17. Okay. God is warning over here. And this was long before Christ was incarnated. Okay. Behold, they shall gather, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. So what God is saying, and listen, there will be human beings, members of your own species, that will turn on you, and, act, and they, will, they will come together and operate against you. But it's not because of me. I'm not the one doing it. I'm not the one behind it. I let it happen for practical reasons, but it's not me. And God gave us another promise. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Verse 16. 
Behold, I've created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that brings forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waster to destroy. So what God is saying is, listen, all these human beings on the earth, they have the origin from me, whether they want to admit it or not. So both the one making the weapon has origin from me and the one that's actually waste and the, and the reprobate is wasting himself away, they both have origin with me. And I'm above them. Verse 17, God says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Who will condemn those tongues rising up in judgment? We do. Okay? But condemn simply means shall annul it, nullify it. We will nullify every agreement against us when we operate in agreement with Christ. And it says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness of me, said the Lord. So we don't have our own righteousness that we earn by good works. Our righteousness from God, okay? So there's another thing, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 8 and 19. It says, riches and honor are with me. Remember, riches belong to a community, not to an individual. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches. So your community will be, will be rich. Your community will not, will not like any finances. 90, my fruit is better than gold. Yeah, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. So understand this. For you to operate in the abundance, you need to follow his guidelines. Now, look, let's go to another thing. Luke chapter 10, verse 70 to 20. It's after the, the seven disciples went out and did the ministry came back. Verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, they called him Lord, because they recognized he's Lord. Even the devils are subject unto, unto us through thy name. And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fell from fall from heaven. A circular thing. Remember, Jesus was going to kick him out of heaven, even, uh, remember? Verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and none shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that it was that the spirits are subject unto you, but I rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So what Jesus is telling them is, listen, the power given unto you, you will trample, you will you will walk upon every organized danger against you and will not harm you. Nothing will hurt you as long as you walk in this power. So for you to walk in this power, don't be so focused on the evil spirits that are listening towards you. Don't be focused on evil spirits. Please don't. Focus on the fact that, that you are secured because your names are written in heaven. That's what so they're already you're already safe. You're not going, you're not becoming safe. You are already safe because your names are written in heaven. Okay. That's eternal security, right? Oh fear. Once you become a believer, you're 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 safe forever. It's, it's quoted, your names are written in heaven. Are written. Okay. So Another thing Jesus said, I have to finish this and I go to the white, but it's quite important. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. Christ said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Remember, Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. So when he talks about his father, he talks about himself in his original pure state. Okay? Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. It talks about the reprobate and the, 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 those of the human species that will reprobate themselves. Okay? And every branch that bears fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So if you're a believer, God will work on you that you become better. Why is God working on the unbelief that got better? Because unbelief needs to become born again first, or else it will turn reprobate. Now, verse 3. Now, you are clean to the word which I spoke unto you. When you agree with Christ, when you agree with him, you are clean. But you still will, you will still encounter pollution during this lifetime. And that's the pollution you need to overcome. Verse 4, abide in me, and I am you. So be Christ-centered. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, nor can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me, and I him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So Christ repeated it. Without me you can't do anything. So anything you do accomplish apart from Christ will end up crashing. As if it's nothing. Okay, so understand this. Misfortune and violence should not even be around believers. Okay, 
But for, uh, for that to happen, we need to walk in the power he has given to us with a focus on the fact we are secured in him. So we need to follow his guidelines. Well, when we have this power, okay? So only believers get power with having father. But not all believers get the same amount of power. Some get more than others based on how trustworthy they are and based on what God built to do. If God built you to do more things than another believer, of course you get more power than other believer. But even then, you only get the power when you have become trustworthy by following his guidelines. Simple as that. Okay. I'm going to start StreamYard from my phone now. I'm going to put it right over there so that I can continue on the whiteboard. So while I'm starting um, StreamYard on my mobile phone, is all of this clear on to you? Let me know in the live chat. Hold on. All right. So, All right. So it's all clear. You can all hear me. Okay, someone says volume is low. Okay, I'm going to work on that. Let me work on that, please. Okay, let me go to settings. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Now, is it clear? Is it better now? Let me check. In any case, let me write down a few things on the whiteboard. Okay. 
Volume is much better now, so I don't have to put on my headset. Okay, that's fine. So, okay. This is you. Okay? This is your energy tools. We know that. This is, let's say this is a robber. Okay? Who wants to rob you? The robber has a dark energy field, very heavy. You start this dark echo around the environment. Now, the robber is someone in the streets where he has a knife or a gun, most rocky. He's in a negative condition. So he's giving off this next echo. So, you will feel, if you're close to this individual, that there's, a, that there's a heaviness around. You will feel it. So, it can be, for example, that, let's say you have a block over here, and you are over here, it's you, and the robber is over there. And let's say now, this is a distance of 200 meters. 200 meters, okay? With those 200 meters, this dark vibe of this robber is emitting. But guess what? There are many other people around too. Okay? So you look around you and you can't figure out where this dark vibe is coming from. But there's someone about to escalate with a weapon. Psychologically, in the best thing, his energy field gives off this dark emission. Within 200 meters, it's very easy for you to pick it up that there is someone around with such tension, such intention. Now you know who it is, okay? So what you should be doing the moment you receive those shocks is that you release a, a shock of positivity intense back. And by doing that, the little shock you got also goes back to the center also. That is what should happen. What often happens is, is that you pick up this very happy vibe somewhere. Of course, you can't directly see where it comes from. But you think, oh, it mustn't be me. So we just shake it up and continue. So you end up walking. Uh, let me use another. Let's say the same street, okay? You end up leaving the Starbucks wherever you are, and you go towards here. Here, the individual, the robber, is now heading in this direction, and because your energy field uh, became sticky towards this dark emission, because you didn't shoot it off, now. There is a pool between the robber and you. And guess what? It ends up in a big clash. It ends up robbing you. That's how it goes. Because all these people around here that don't shake off that intensity that, that this robber emits, they all become familiar with the pollution it emits out. And he will feel more comfortable around those people. And before you know it, he ends up escalating on those people. Now, a pagan, the start of of pagans, you should see this a pagan over here. A pagan has a charm about his energy fields, just the amount of escalates. And this charm kind of blocks away a lot of dark emission on the people. 
So there's still danger here. But the pagan is relief from danger. He's not, the, the, he's still in danger, but he's relieved from the danger being affected on it. That's how the charm works. So you can have a pagan standing right over here. But the pagan has not been affected negatively by the dark charges of the robber. So the pagan will not be robbed by the robber. The other people who didn't pay attention to intuition and didn't shake off the dark fight that was in the atmosphere, their energy fields became acclimatized to, the, to that darkness. And now the one in middle darkness develops this tie with them, the short term tie. And that's how the violence played out. And if someone is wounded in the energy fields, that means the dark tension from the robber will go right into the energy field directly. And that individual will become like a magnet for the robber. So before I continue, is this exactly clear on to you? How fatal encounters or toxic encounters Happen. Is it clear to you now how fatal the toxic encounters happen in daily life? Let me know the live chat. Need to walk towards the smartphone. Is this clear? This example of here. Let me open the, the live chat on YouTube to see if, if it's possible over there. Okay, uh, I have to say it once more, so you didn't hear anything fully. Okay, so let me go over it one more time. This is you. You stand over here in a Starbucks or a shop, whatever. There's a robber 200 meters away, somewhere like that. The robber, hold on, let me turn all the sound over here. The robber emits this low, low frequency, this heavy frequency. This heavy frequency affects your energy field at the edge. So your energy field becomes acclimatized to it. Once it happens, there is a psychic, um, I would say, pull towards you and what emitting uh, that pollution. Because the pollution gets sticking onto you. But so if you walk towards the here and the robber walks towards here, he's going to feel attracted towards you and he ends up robbing you. Because he's in negativity, and the violence is about to do physically is to release the unrest. So because he was emitting unrest, and you didn't shake off you when you felt it at a distance, now there is a, cool, there's a bond, there's a, a short-term bond. That's how he ended up having this toxic account he robbed you. The pagan has a, demon, a, a has demonic escalate on top of his energy field, which is like a shield that keeps unrest vibration at, uh, at bay. So they relieved from danger, but not relieved from it. The believer should be countering. Once we feel something weird on our actual, we should be countering it immediately. Does that happen? It often does not. And that's why a lot of beliefs have happened those weird encounters over and over again. So, and so, the, so what you need to learn from this is that, look, as a human being, you are a multidimensional creature. Yes, you are. You pick up things from a distance. So if you pick up this low, if, if, you, feel, if you pick up this low threat or this misfortunate sensation 
out of the blue. You're not making it up. Why would you think something like that? You're not imagining. It's not all in your head. You are picking up actual danger somewhere. Of course, you know where it's coming from. You don't. So don't get paranoid and think, oh, where it's coming from? Where it's coming from? Oh, there. No, no, don't get paranoid. Don't stress out. Just counter it in a joyful condition. So if you walk, um, okay, let me bring this a little bit back so you can see me fully. So if you are at the supermarket and you pick up this intense heaviness, like if you're about to be choked, you're not going to think, oh shit, and you get out of fear for this danger problem. No, you're going to be in joyful saying, you say to yourself, praise the Lord, I'm safe. Every arrow aimed at me, go back and says, that she's my thing. You don't have to do it very loud, but begin to truly decree and declare and have this joyful attitude at the moment. And begin to move your body a little bit also. Shake off the unrest that's in the atmosphere. By shaking it off, it doesn't get sticky on your energy fields. Because once it comes sticky on your energy fields, that unrest not only weighs you down, it also bonds you with the one emitting the unrest. And not only that, other people in unrest will also bond with you. So let's say you have, let's say you have a guy who's about to be evicted from his house and he has his unrest is in mid. And you pick up unrest, you don't know where it's coming from, but you don't shake it off. Someone else with a knife may see you. He will pick up familiarity with his own unrest and end up to come to upload unrest on you. Now he's dead. You know what I mean? So learn to shake off unrest immediately when you pick it up. It's something we should be doing. Okay? But a lot of believers aren't doing it. So, before I continue, right now, is this, is the science behind fatal? Fatal is deadly and toxic encounters. Clear? You will, you will survive toxic encounters. A fatal encounter, you won't survive because you're dead. Okay? But do you understand the science now behind fatal and toxic encounters? Let me know the live chat. Is it clear on to you? Let me know. Okay, good. I'm glad you understand this. Okay? Because a lot of believers think, oh, I'm a believer. So uh, I'll just walk around and I don't have to do anything. Listen, the safety promise you have in Father is conditional on your participation in safety. Look, you cannot participate in violence and the same time be free from violence. Because remember, if you believe that violence can be justified, violence can be good in some situations, you're not participating in violence by agreeing with it. You can't agree with violence and say that be free from violence on those happen. You have to swear, swear off violence and operate in his real power. Okay? If you believe in violence anywhere, then you're bound to have toxic encounters. And I pray you'll never get a fatal encounter because you won't survive that. Some believe that fatal encounters and now they're dead. Okay? They have to wait till Jesus resurrect them when Jesus comes back. So let me remove this. So now an example for the winner, okay? Let me draw a female doll for a female character very quickly. Let's say this Jennifer. Just take a common name, you Sarah Jennifer. This is a feminine energy feels she would like a great. Okay. Jennifer is blue. Why? Why is she blue? She's healthy. Her energy field is healthy also. Feminine energy field consists of layers, layers are healthy, things are functioning. She gives off this soft feminine image environment. Okay, she's a blue woman. She's completely soft. All right. Now, let's say now Jennifer gets has a child. She has a son called Rob. 
Uh, let's say, let's call him Bach for a moment. Just some called Bach, okay? Let's say she picks up, let's say her son's in danger, okay? Because let's say Bob here has child molesters around. And the child molesters are projecting this filth onto Bob. Now Bob becomes wounded and he gives a uh, he gives off this toxic sensation of that he's uncomfortable. The mother will pick up this shock at a distance, especially if Bob is still, you know, below age 15, okay? The moment Jennifer picks up, hmm, why do you think about my son like this? Why do you feel like my son's in danger? If the son's under age and living at the house, she can go and check on the son. But let's say he's a grown, so her son's a grown man living in his own place. She can pick up on the phone asking, uh, Bob, it's mom, how are you doing? Are you okay? And check, okay? But before she picks up the phone to call her son, say how he's doing, she should be command triggering. Okay, let's say this is Bob over here. She should be triggering a safety bubble around her son. As I mentioned before, women cannot generate a safety bubble just like that for something like men. They can trigger it. With her feminine decrease, she should be triggering a safety bubble. And you know what's better? Because she, with a safety bubble, will slow down the unrest around her son, Bob. Okay? If Bob is still a child and a child nest around him, she may not know a child nest, but when she puts a safety bubble around her son, on the age son, what happens is that the safety bubble she generates slows down the child nesters. Okay? And then she go to her husband, hopefully he's a father of the child, maybe she can go to her, a mill, her pastor or her whatever mill believer, and now the mill believer now will release full fire around, and all the unrest around is destroyed. Mill believer. All right? That's science how it goes in, in practice. This how mothers or your stepmom or the biological ones of mothers should be looking after their children primarily on a psychic level. You pick up something where you say one your children immediately you release your feminine happiness of the situation. That slows down on the rest around you. And now you push on the men around you to suddenly intervene with their with their magnetic uh, fire on behalf of your around your children. Is this example clear to you? Let me know the live chat. Let me know. Any questions about it? Please let me know right now. Is this not clear on to you? Okay, that's the question. When you're uncomfortable, you're wounded. Okay, listen. If you have wrong expectations and now you get upset, now you're wounded, but it's an internal wound because you're the one who's messed up mentally. But if you get uncomfortable and it's not something internal, it means that somewhere around you there is something wrong. It can be both. Maybe you are wounded by your own wrong thinking and there's danger around. In that case, it's a bit more difficult for you to discern. But that when you're uncomfortable, check why you're uncomfortable. Is something internal that you need to change about yourself, about your thinking, or is something out there that needs to be addressed? Never ignore it. Okay? 
By the way, it's not just the mothers of the children that can pick up something's wrong with the child. Every woman can pick up and something's wrong with the child, any woman. So every woman should release her feminine happiness immediately when they pick up something is off with the child. No excuses. Okay? So let's say now it's not the children or one of her own grown children. Let's say now it's towards her husband, for example. Let's say now Jennifer is married to, let me say, let me just draw a man over here. She's married to Jack, okay? This energy feels very big because he's a man. Though they're a sexual union, they're bonded together. What if Jack is under attack? Okay. What if Jack is under attack over here? So he gets wounded. The wife will pick up signals here and there that something goes on with the husband. What she should do then is pick up the phone, call him, or go to him in a physical directly. And what happens is, hold on, let me just draw them both together over here. I know drawings are not that, that well, but please bear with me. This is the male Jack's energy field. This is her feminine energy field in between. So by her now, in a healthy blue state, going to her husband's on her deck, her feminine softness cools down the unrest that penetrated Bob, but penetrated Jack, I mean, and Jack's able to heal quicker. So wives have a healing effect on their husbands if they're feminine. You know, I mean, it's quite important to understand this. So ladies, if you pick up your man, or say your husband, is on something, go to him directly, if you can, in person, or call him, whatever, because your feminine softness will have will trigger a healing uh, process in the energy field of your man, simple as that. Oh, and by the way, such a session of the couple is very hard uh, to get attacked by violence to begin with. It's very hard. It's, it's not impossible, it's extremely hard to do it. Okay. All right. So is this clear on to you? How women, when it comes to their uh, significant other, how they can deter misfortune and violence away from this significant other. Is this clear on to you? Let me know. If there are any questions surrounding it, just let me know right now. Just so you understand, men look after women, but women should look after men too. Okay? So yes, as a woman, you're, you're, you're considered the, the vulnerable vessel, the weak vessel, but just because you're, you are the weak vessel doesn't mean that you're not powerful, okay? Remember, so let me just write right over here. This is how it should be. They slow down on rest. And this, the 
ways. And decreases Repeat in the live chat. Without read over here. Women slow down on the rest. And this delays and decreases misfortune. Repeat this in the live chat. Women slow down on the rest. This delays and decreases misfortune. Repeat in the live chat, please. Repeat it, all of you. Repeat it in life with all of you, please. Thank you very much. Current girl, the second part also. Women slow down on the rest. This delays and decreases misfortune. Everyone repeat it, please repeat it. You need to remember this. You need to remember this. This is the ability the feminine ability is often forgotten. Some women don't even know they have this ability. Well, now you do. Okay, read it in your, in your notepad. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, so as a woman, as a female believer, you're not a helpless, defenseless creature. Stop thinking it. Slow down the unrest around you, or towards not an, around an individual, because this the delays and increases misfortune. Again, it doesn't mean the misfortune is completely gone, but you delay and decrease it, so the misfortune becomes ineffective. Okay? If you have a son, or unless you have any child in your family, let's say you bring a child to school, and you see there's a classmate of his who's quite sad. You make up there's something wrong going on wrong with the child. You're not the mother of the child. You think, hey, this child is part of the community. So you, together with other few believers, you release your feminine softness with increased and decorations and any imagination on that child. Okay? It can't it can be the child was sexually being sexually molested. Now the child molester now is slowed down from doing what he's doing to that child. The child left suddenly becomes sick or whatever happens. Now, because it's safety problem, you put it on the child. And now, male believers come in and they deal with whatever danger is on the child immediately. Okay? So, women have their part in safety for the community on site level. It's not all on the men. Women need to play the parts too. Women need to look after other women too. Simple as that. All right? So, understand this violence. And misfortune are hand in hand. Misfortune is when the community or individual miss out on benefits due to dysfunction. That's misfortune. Okay? So, misfortune isn't just you losing body parts or someone just dying. Misfortune is also you're still alive, you have all your body parts, but you're dysfunctional and you end up wasting your life. Whether by disease or by you being paralyzed or by, I don't know, whatever hinder there is. So misfortune with violence are things we need to trample upon. We trample scorpions and serpents and hook them with the enemy. It's not Jesus doing it, it's we doing it in his resurrection power. Amen. Let's see what people wrote down here in the, in the chat. Now, that's how it goes with the women. Now, let me show how it goes with the men now. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, let me go get it for another song over here. It's a dude. Let's call him Franklin. Mill Energy Field, that's his big. And this is a woman suffering domestic violence, for example. And she feels completely messed up, broken. This Anna. This suffers domestic violence. At the hand of her jealous, out of control partner over here, who's fully polluted. Okay. Now, one day, um, Franklin is just walking through town with his little son, and sees this woman walking by with her with her baby, and he got this terrible traumatic shock hitting him, and he picked up it's from this woman over here. So he walked towards the uh, man, uh, Franklin, said, I'm my son, are you doing well? Oh, yeah, I'm doing fine, doing fine. Just here with the baby, enjoy the sunlight. And that's right, the night goes on. But Franklin was not stupid. He, he picked up something from him. But Franklin realized, you know what, this like something in a, in a sexual atmosphere with a partner. I don't want to get involved physically. So what happens? Franklin remembered her face and her name. Franklin goes at home. He talks about it with his wife. Okay? His wife is over here. His wife, Lisa. So both together, now, first the wife releases feminine softness to triggers towards another safety bubble around Anna. And then Franklin comes with this intense fire, which also surrounds Anna. And guess what? The domestic abuser, in this case, he runs away. He's fleeing. It gets too hard for him. So next time Franklin is with his son outside and he sees the same woman. And the woman now looks happier. And she said, hey, Franklin's me. And she, she said, hey, how are you doing? Uh, and then she told me, you know, last time I asked him what I was doing, um, I was actually with, living with my, with my ex-boyfriend. who was quite abusive, verbally, and all that. But for some reason, after I met you, within a few days, he just told me he doesn't love me anymore. And he just left. He just left the house. And since then, me and my son, we able to move to another apartment. I have been from ever since. Wow. You see here? So Frank and Lisa, two believers, intervened on behalf of this woman in domestic violence. And the guy that was abusing her ended up leaving because he became too uncomfortable to stay there. You know what I mean? So those are things the believing couples can do. But let's say he didn't have a wife. He can also go to another film believer and say, yo, let's uh, intercede for this woman over here. Because all by himself, he would be able to generate a safety bubble, but the safety bubble will be quite intense. And the intense safety bubble is fine, but it can also attract other bad attention. It's better to do it in harmony, the feminine softness and the masculine fierceness. It works best together. So, anywhere you have believers in the community, domestic violence should be a rare thing. You can't have believers, especially believing couples living somewhere, and domestic violence, with violence between sex partners, violence with children, it's just rampant and these. If you have believers, especially believing couples living somewhere, and the crime is still booming, what does it say about those believers? Let me know the last chance. Oh, and the answers. If they're believers, 
especially believing couples living somewhere. And the crime clips first, and nevertheless, what does this, this say about those believers? Just let me know the logic. What does it say about those believers? Let me know what does it say about those believers if they live somewhere, especially if they're believing couples and still this crime just unfolding so easily. What does it say about those believers then? Indeed, they're compromised, not walking power. It means they're neglectful, simple as that. Sometimes it's a woman who the man. Doesn't mean it's a woman who the man or men who the woman. We can intervene at a distance using our psychic abilities to, to preserve safety and sanity in our communities. And we should be doing that. It, sh it shouldn't happen that domestic violence goes back and forth. Police has to come multiple times uh, and, and their children have been traumatized. We as believers can just say, enough now, done. Who are you guys to intervene? Uh, we are appointed by the Heavenly Father, shut your mouth. I mean, that's how we should be as believers. When we are in a community, we should be the central figures affecting the community. Simple as that. If competition believes somewhere and you have no central effect on the community, come on now. So let's look at the norm. Let's look at, for example, a building. Okay, let's say it's a building, okay? From the stores, hi. And this building is run by a big corporation, okay? Let's say, for example, McDonald's, okay? They have fallen angels roaming around, flying around the building, keeping the building on this demonic estimate, okay? That's the prop. Okay, this this one called property property chart. Property chart. So you have fallen angels flying around the building and keep emitting their estimate on the building. Sometimes it's it's. One meter thick, even. One meter thick. That's not. That's about three feet. And this keeps the building shielded from unrest. Now there can be a little bit of unrest in there, in the building, but the building generally stable. That's how pagans. Secure their buildings and their homes. So they have a little altar somewhere in the building where they're doing some rituals. Fallen angels, angels are triggered. They fly around the building. They poop out with their emissions, this demonic excrement. Fallen angels have literal poop, but they have this excrement come out of their shape and they smear it all over the building. And now they can still be unrest in the building, but the building is secured. That's how pagans shield off danger from their houses and their establishments. Is this clear to you? Let me know in the live chat. I go live a little bit. Is this clear to you? Okay, that's why, for example, a police station or a courthouse, when you enter in, they maintain this toxic climate there, in most cases, especially in a courthouse, because without toxicity, the demonic estimate cannot work anymore. 
That's why you barely hear of people breaking into courthouse, storm a courthouse, because they have these demonic estimates, which a lot of human unrest outside. Let's say now this is the house of a believer, okay, with a garage over here. Okay. This is the house of a believer. Let's call it John. This is John's house. John is a believer. What John should be doing is generating this atmosphere of grace. Okay. What he should be doing is generating an atmosphere of praise through being joyful of that in his house. It's all going to affect the climate of the house. And because of that, any human being with unrest wants to stay away from the place. You hear me? And if they will send a missile onto the house, a the missile, it's going to crash about the house. Now, John will still feel the effect of the missile hitting the layer, the side layer on his house. He'll still feel the shock of it, he will. But still, the missile crashes because there's an atmosphere of praise uh, in the house that causes the whole area around the house to be like a bubble. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that the country and attacks won't happen on the place. And there are no people with unrest coming in. But people in unrest, they really don't want to be around the house. With a pagan building that's on their a property charm, that people can still enter the place in and out. But it just can't offload easily because there's this demonic escalation that is, that, that is uh, shielding it. So this is the right way of protection, which is enduring a lot of things. It's the pagan way, and it comes side effects with it. A property charm comes with side effects on the environment. Atmosphere of praise is waterproof. Waterproof against misfortune. So are these two differences clear onto you between the right way to shield off misfortunate violence from your home or your establishments and the, how pagans do it? Is this clear onto you? Let me know the difference. All right. And that is why once you generate an atmosphere of grace in your house and surrounds as a bubble, don't be surprised if certain relatives and certain people don't want to come to your house. You may invite them to come over to my place. We're going to have fellow, we're going to have fellowship or come over to my place. Uh, we're going to meet and they always come with excuse they can't go, they can't come. Now sometimes people can't come because they have a religion with good reason why they can't come, but if you keep the house in an atmosphere of praise. And you know, certain people just can't come to your house. Be glad they're not coming. Because they're carrying unrest with them. You know what I mean? So maybe even believers not be able to come to your house. Because those believers are operating in unrest. We have an atmosphere of praise. We do that by waking up every morning, rejoicing in the day, decreeing, declaring, and fasting and praying. We do that. We also have fast the imagination in mental energy fields. That's how we meditate on God's word and generate an atmosphere of praise. Okay? An atmosphere of praise does not mean that as a human being, you, you can't feel bad from time to time. Remember, you're still in the world, so be affected. But this atmosphere of praise is a waterproof shield against misfortune. Simple as that. Maybe their debt collectors want to come to your house to harass you, but this atmosphere of praise. Cause them to fall down and then go close to your house. They won't function physically and then go close to your house. It's not quite like thinking, you know what, we're not going to get house anymore. Maybe the burglars want to break in. But after they pass by your house, they, they, they kind of, the 
cardinal function always have card accidents because the atmosphere of phrase that uh, bounce them off your house. I did they oh, not that house. It's going to intimidate the White House. You know what I mean? You have no guns, no weapons. You, have, you don't have any of that. But they just are terrified they're going to come close to your house. And understand, a pagan, uh, a property charm lasts for about three months. Some may last four months. That has to be renewed. Property charms are not that durable at all. Three to four months it lasts. After three or sometimes four months, you need to renew it with another ritual. Not need another group of angels to poop around the building. So property charms is what how pagans do it, how people wrote to it. They're very risky. Because let's say now, you have to renew the charm in 10 days. But the last 10 days of the charm is already weak, a bit weaker. So within those 10 days of the charm is weakening, more bad unrest can happen. So you're always under the threat, under the time uh, pressure to make sure you renew the charm. This is a sorrow believers don't have if they persist in the atmosphere of grace. That's why we're commanded in the New Testament to be joyful at all times. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. So understand this. The world has pagans with their property charms. Believe in the answer of praise. These two don't go hand in hand. So if you have an establishment somewhere in a building and you're using a property charm, you as a believer may not be welcome in the building. They may not even want to hire you over there. Or have, have you ever experienced this as a believer? You go to a restaurant or you go to let's say, uh, a, a mall or any type of place, it's like people are not happy to see you there. It's like they wish you just would F off and leave and think, whoa, I'm a customer, I'm a client, I'm going to spend money on you and the benefit your business support you. Why are you so hustled towards me? All the other customers and clients are welcome to this moment. You come in kind of shop, hoping you get away. Why? Because you are a threat to the property charm over there. If you stay there for way too long, the the property charm begins to go weak and weaker, and before you know it, it may even collapse. And then all the unrest in the captain bay overtakes them. You follow me? That's why some, sometimes you're not welcome this in the place as a believer. In that case, just leave. They don't, they don't want the real protection from God, it means they're the ones out of their minds. Nobody in the right mind would hold on to this if they can get this. If you're not aware of this, okay, that's different. But once you are aware of this, and you prefer. And once you're aware of this, once you prefer this, you're out of your mind. So if they're out of your mind, what you want to do, the pagan property charm, just get out, away from there. Don't worry of your breath. Simple as that. So I've explained here how to how film believers can delay misfortune and make misfortune ineffective. How male believers can put fire around, around certain people and keep them uh, and, and, and destroy the, the unrest around them. You get me? I also explained how we can anoint our houses and our establishments as believers. And I, I also compared how pagans do it with demonic aid. So my question is, are there some questions about this over here? There's just one more part I want to do about, about, uh, about shielding of misfortune, but is this part a clear on to you? Or are there questions about this part? I will give you one and a half minute. Are there questions about this whole part here? Let me know.
Okay, Feline says she's made to reach like this. This is a synthesis agitation towards her. Well, now you know why. Now you know why. Are there any questions about this part? Okay, I'll wait for just one more minute and I'll continue. Okay, no questions from Dion. Okay, that's clear. Good. Now we need to learn how to shield off activities. All right. Let's say now, I'll keep this over here. Let's say now you're about to catch an airplane. Okay, so let me just draw the airplane over here. You're about to catch a flight. Okay, you go from Los Angeles to Tokyo, Japan. Los Angeles, USA to Tokyo, Japan. Now, the pagans obviously have their security measures on the planes of them. Well, not all of them do, some don't. But the thing is, having their, this, having their green charm on an airplane may not be smart. That shows a lot of believers flying with airplanes. So a lot of airplanes simply don't have any actual charm on them. But it's the pilots that often have charms. Whatever, not whole plane. Because it's not that smart to put a whole thick charm on an airplane. First of all, it goes to the sky, so... This also affects it per reach when it comes, and the demonic estimate isn't even that strong to begin with. And also believers can be there. Even some of the flight attendants or, or pilots are believers, so how's that going to work? So this is what you do. When you buy your ticket to fly with an airplane, command, let's say you let's say you are about to go to Tokyo, Japan. Let's say you go to Canada or airport. You command. Peace, you command joy, and all of that to go ahead of you and surround Haneda Airport. This is what you do. So you have this blue atmosphere already at your place of arrival. Then you command the same about the airport where you depart from. And then you speak of peace over the air aircraft. So the aircraft gets this um, bubble around it also. And that's how you jump into the airplane and please, you're at your destination. Hold on. Should I? Okay, no, you can see it on the, you can see the whiteboard, that's fine. Look, sometimes it happens that airplanes crashed. Of course, there's a malfunction physically with maybe, I don't know, the engine or whatever. But let's say you, Let's give an example. Let's say you have one individual with a mis layer of misfortune on him. That one individual with this layer of misfortune on him or her can endanger the whole aircraft in the, in the sky. Let's say you have someone with a load of misfortune on the engine field and the end of the aircraft. That load of misfortune can cause the aircraft malfunction. Now, most of the time it doesn't lead to a crash. Just you will notice something with, with, the, with the airplane, but you, you, most of nothing happens. But it's not like other people on the, on the aircraft. So when you as a believer, shouting out peace and joy and happiness on the airport you're departing from, and also the airport you're, uh, you will arrive at, and also speak out peace and joy over the aircraft, by doing all of that, if there is someone with head misfortune, if there's a passenger with head misfortune boarding the aircraft, it's already covered when it can go. How many of you have, heard, uh, have, have learned this before? How many of you have heard of this uh, before? Let me know in the live chat.
You don't have to have a prayer of 20 minutes long. Just command, decree, declare, use your imagination, use your emotions, and command this joyful climate at the airport you're departing from, and the airport will arrive, and speak out this peace over the aircraft. Very briefly, just do it. I, the, I, I, I taught you guys, I taught this on YouTube uh, several years ago, briefly. But you, you don't only do it with aircrafts and aviation. Also do it when you're catching the bus or catching the train or you're taking an Uber or a taxi, whatever. Or if you're the one driving a car, command peace over your car first before you enter your car. Really? Because don't you know that there are wizards out there meditating on rest on some of those buses and vehicles on the roads. And that's why if accidents happen, yes, there are wizards, human mills, completely out of Satan, who meditate on rest in traffic. Sometimes they dress up like they're homeless people, but they're not homeless, and they're meditating on rest. And because of that, tragedies happen, car accidents, people die, people lose body parts, people become paralyzed, people become blind. Such things happen. There are wizards out there meditating on rest on vehicles, causing things to malfunction. So why shouldn't we as believers be on top of it to, to enforce peace everywhere we go? Oh, by the way, I've seen some of those wizards pretending to be homeless folks, uh, meditating on rest on the public, so watch out for them. Watch out. So, you if you go to a con if you go to a concert, I hope you don't go to the concert of a, of a rapper Bay Illuminati singer, because why would you want to go there? But if you go to a concert or you go to a conference or any meeting, send peace ahead of you. But Rashid, what if it's pagans doing something? Then the pagans will benefit from the peace you sent. Simple as that. There'll be a collateral blessing for them because you're there. Don't you know that sometimes people want believers around just because of the peaceful effect they have? On the other hand, if there's something deeply demonic going on, then they want believers to leave or else it can't work. You can have a concert where they want to put spells on the public and it won't work. The artists can't even sing unless believers leave. They even pay believers to leave. All right. So are there any questions in general about this topic of shielding off misfortune and violence? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know now. I'm sitting on my desk slash altar here. So are there any questions about this topic in general? Let me know now. It's almost two hours about to close the live stream. So, but first I want to give the opportunity to ask questions, all right? I'll wait for one more minute to see which questions come in. Fulin, I'm glad you're conscious of this in your presence. I'm glad. Amen. Good, Nadine. Good, Nadine. I'm glad you're doing it. Praise God. All right. I didn't get any questions here. Anyway, thank you all for being here.
please keep our faith in Christ, obey his word, and I'll see you next live stream. Shalom. God is good all the time. Amen.